So in this video, I'll be talking about the OC G7 monitor. Now, just a disclaimer, OC did send me this monitor review, but with that being said, let's take a look at what's inside the box. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and unbox the OC G7 monitor. Hard case here, which is uh, pretty sturdy looking. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over so you can kind of see it a little bit better there. All right, so here it is. Um, let's take a look at some manuals. Looks like the, G, the G7 4K manual, on-camera monitor. You got some cards right here. Warranty card, looks like. What we got right here is a sunshade. Oh, sweet. Let's go ahead and open that up so you can see what that looks like. Okay, it's a nice little sunshade there. Hmm. It's awesome. All right, we got power cables and a power adapter here with a European one, US one, and then I'm pretty sure this is the UK version or Middle Eastern, so that's cool. It's a universal traveling power adapter. So let's go set that to the side. Let's go to the good stuff. All right, let's see what's inside the plastic here. All right, it looks like this is, oh, okay. So this is a little V-mount plate that you can attach on the back of the monitor. Looks like, yeah, because this is a V-mount, has screws in there. Let's go ahead and put that on there. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be using a V-mount with this monitor, but it's nice to have that option just in case you need that. Um, I do have a lot of Sony batteries, so I don't see myself using V-mount. It does come with a P-tap as well, which is sweet. So that means you can plug it in a V-mount battery on the side using a P-tap to a barrel DC right here, which is pretty awesome as well. So you technically don't need, if you have a V-mount that has a P-tap output, you can use this instead of mounting that whole V-mount battery on the monitor itself. All right, and then it comes with uh, it comes with a little monitor arm. Has a little nice weight to that. And finally, we take a look at the actual monitor itself. All right. This is kind of nice because it's a uh, custom laser cut. So yeah, here is the monitor. I am gonna have to buy some screen protector for this monitor. I always like to do that because um, yeah, I don't want to damage the monitor. Even like camera screens, they usually get protectors right away so I don't jack up the, um, the monitor screen. All right, so this is the monitor itself. All right, so on the back, we have our in and out HDMIs. You got your SDI right here. So this monitor right here is the G7, so it comes with both the HDMI and the SDI, like I said previously. The power button is in the back, which I really like. I like the location and the layout of this monitor so far because my previous monitors, usually the HDMI inputs are on the side and then the power button is usually on top or on the side. It's nice to have it on the back because uh, it's really easier as far as access goes, uh, the way I operate stuff. You got your DC in here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off for now. And you do have the joystick button for the um, for controlling right here on the side as well. And you got an SD card slot right here on the left side of the monitor. So yeah, and you got a mounting hole right here and a mounting hole right here. Bottom and top mounting hole, you got a couple of fans. You have a speaker right here, okay. Now the G7 weighs around one pounds with dimensions of 7.5 inches wide, 4.7 inches length, and one inch thick. I honestly think seven inch monitors are the perfect size. It's not too big and it's not too small either. It doesn't draw as much attention as like a nine inch monitor. One of the reasons why I was interested about this monitor is because it comes with both SDI and HDMI with loop through capabilities. This is great because sometimes I own 
cameras with HDMI only, but sometimes I own cameras with SDI only, like the Ursa Mini Pro G2, Ursa Mini 4.6K. So having both in a monitor will save you a lot of money in the long run. Which brings us to signal support. The OCG7 can take 4K signal over HDMI up to 30 frames per second and 2K signal of SDI up to 60 frames per second. Now, there's a couple of ways you can power the OCG7 on the back of the monitor. You will see that it takes Sony NPF battery, which can last you around uh, two to three hours depending on how big your batteries are. Now, I have some really, really thick ones and that's gonna last me a long time. Now more ways you can power the monitor is by using the V-mount plate that it comes with, the P-tap, and the AC adapter if you would like. So next up are the built-in tools. Alright, so what we're going to be doing now is taking a look at the inside of the monitor. We're going to take a look at the menu and the settings and finally some of the tools that this monitor has built in. So as you can see here, you see the joystick on the right side like I showed you guys earlier. Now keep a note that this monitor is not touch screen. So that means you have to take care and be very careful when pushing and pressing this button right here because once you lose this button right here, you're pretty much done. So let's go ahead and press the joystick now. You're gonna see that on the top uh, left corner, you're gonna see that it's asking us to add a new tool if you wanna add a new tool. So let's go ahead and do that by pressing it again. What you're gonna see next are the frame tools, exposure tools, focus tools, and some LUTs tools. So let's go ahead and go over the aspect first. Let's go ahead and click that. And let's go ahead and push right on the joystick and then we're gonna enable it and you're gonna see that that's gonna be um, showing up now, little black mat right here. So let's go ahead and change the ratio around so you can kind of see what you can do here. Now 2.39 is my go-to uh, aspect ratio in post. So this is the guidelines that I use majority of the time. Uh, additionally, you do have some custom ones that you can do if you want to go that route. You can set the uh, custom settings to line, mat, and then change the height and width as well. So let's go ahead and turn that off. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and delete these and move on to the next tool. Okay, so the next tool we're going to take a look at is just some safe frames for you guys to use. So press right again, and then we're going to turn it back on. And we're gonna have the action turned on and then we're gonna change the format to different formats and you're gonna see that white line around the image. Yeah, 4, 3, 16, 9, 14, 9. And you can also turn on the title save frame, which is pretty cool as well. All right, so the next tool we're gonna take a look at is the center crosshair. Um, I use this quite a bit, to be honest, especially when I am um, shooting by myself. If I wanna, you know, center something in the image or the frame, you can kinda see it here. But um, yeah, it's just a little crosshair in the middle of the screen and that's pretty much it. All right, let's add another tool. The crosshatch tool is like your, uh, you know, rule of thirds tool here. So if I go to enable that and then go to the regions, and change the regions to just two. Uh, you're gonna see your usual uh, rule of thirds right there, but you can increase this to nine if you want, which is kind of crazy. But some people might use this for like a like a moving time lapse or something like that. So you do have that option. All right, let's move on to level. So this monitor does have a built-in level right here. You can see it at the bottom. Now this monitor right now is saying it's not level. So let's go ahead and level that. Let's use that tool to level the monitor. Um, you can also calibrate it right here. So let's go ahead and calibrate. Yes, there you go. And you can increase the sensitivity of your monitor's leveler. All right, moving on to the exposure tools. This monitor comes with false color. Let's go ahead and turn that on. And the first one you're gonna see is the spectrum, which is kind of cool. All right, so if you look at the bottom here, you're gonna see the IRE scale right here the color and the IRE value so that's really nice what we're gonna do now is just take a look at the different settings uh, of the false color so if you go right you're gonna see some Sony Airy, Canon Panasonic red BMD BMD Airy, Sony Sony Panasonic red gamma 3 4 and back to spectrum 
so it does have a lot of really nice false color options built in and this is really useful if you're coming from like you know like a red camera false color and um, you're switching cameras with the false color uh, having red options that means you can take this monitor to any camera and you're gonna have that red false color that you're familiar with I actually use a Tomos false color that's my favorite one in post-production but unfortunately this one doesn't have that but that's okay and let's create a new tool and we're gonna move down to zebra or zebra let's go ahead and turn that on and then um, so the zebra in camera I don't usually use but I know some people like using the zebra for like skin tones and highlights just to make sure they're not clipping any highlights or anything like that. But uh, it's pretty impressive. The zebra setting on here goes from zero to 100, which is very good because you can really tune out a specific exposure on the monitor, which is really good if you are if you like zebra, that is. So add a new tool again, let's take a look at histogram. Again, I don't use histogram in camera. Uh, in the settings, you're gonna see that you can do some Luma RGB, and then you can change the location of your scope around the monitors, all right? Additionally, you can decrease the opacity of that scope so you can blend it a little bit better with your image. All right, let's add another tool. Let's take a look at waveform. Now, waveform is something I use quite a bit. Uh, in the settings, you can change it from Luma to RGB and Parade and that's pretty nice. The size of the waveform you can change as well. Um, you can small, medium, large, and then if you have it in small, medium, you can change the location of the scopes around the monitor, which is cool. And again, opacity. Now, it's really nice because I remember back then, maybe five years ago, it was very hard to get a monitor that had waveform built in. Actually, some of the monitors back then it's really sweet that waveform is becoming uh, the standard inside, uh, you know, like an on-field monitor like this one. Okay, so let's add another tool. We're gonna go down to vector scope. So this thing has vector scope built in. You can change the location again and opacity if need be. Let's go ahead and move on. So that one's pretty straightforward there. Add another tool. We're gonna go to the focus assist and peaking tool now. So let's click on focus assist. We're gonna turn it on and you can see automatically that um, it's working there. So let's change the color from standard to red, green, blue, and then back to standard. You can change the sensitivity as well, but for um, focus assist, I usually leave that to like three because I really want to get that specific. Uh, if I want something specific in focus, um, I'm going to set that sensitivity to three because if you set it to 10, everything is focused. It's kind of hard to determine what is actually in focus. Uh, additionally, you can change the image to black and white to help you focus a little bit more if you need that. All right, so let's add another tool. The focus peaking is right here. Let's go ahead and turn it on and you can increase the intensity. Now what this looks like is like if you were to apply like unsharp mask or something in Photoshop or After Effects and you can see it a little bit better if I get out of this uh, real quick. So I'm gonna, that's on and that's off. On, off. All right, so let's go ahead and go down to look. Scroll down, all the way down, click on look. Now this monitor has a lot of built-in LUTs. Everyone loves LUTs, right? So this monitor has a crap ton of LUTs. So if I go down here, you're gonna see it has five pages of different LUTs, different cameras, uh, different manufacturers, and this is really freaking sweet. So if you're a LUT lover, <laughs> and you have a you know a pretty famous uh, camera company most likely you're gonna have the built-in LUTs in camera however if you do not you can also load user LUTs up to 16 user LUTs you can put in this monitor that's that's a lot of LUTs so let's go all the way down and I think there's two more. Oh, one more. Yeah, two more. So let's take a look at audio meter. Uh, the monitor does have audio meter and you can move it from left to right. Again, this audio meter was not the standard a couple of years ago. Uh, you had to pay extra for audio meters, but uh, the uh, OCG7 does have audio meter straight out of the box. 
Lastly, we're gonna take a look at the image resize function. So let's go ahead and do that, turn it on. And then you're gonna be able to change the scale of your uh, image there. So you can go top left, top mid, top right, mid right, just pretty much move in the image around. So, and then you can have it uh, centered there. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. And then what we'll do now is talk about the pages. If you could, if you look here in the bottom left, you're gonna see there's a one. Now you can actually create more than one page. So you do that by uh, holding the joystick to the right for three seconds. And then actually we have to get out of this tool here. So let's go ahead and press back. Press right for three seconds. And it's gonna ask you to add a new miss set or my set, miss set really. So now you see two. And now we can flip back from one and then two. And if you want to add another one, just hold the joystick right for three seconds and that's going to create another page. So this is a really good idea if you have multiple cameras that are different manufacturers. So let's say for the first one, you had an Aerie Alexa. You're going to set it up for the Aerie Alexa. And then if you want to switch uh, cameras, you go to the page two and let's say this camera right here is a Blackmagic Pocket 4K. So you would set up the LUTs there as well. So having multiple pages is really nice nice because um, you can easily swap between cameras and settings. All right, so to delete the pages, if you wanna get rid of it, you just hold down on the joystick for three seconds and you're gonna get a confirm. It's gonna ask you, press okay by pressing the joystick and that should delete that page for you. All right, so another thing that I really liked about this monitor is something that both of my Odyssey 7Q and Portkey's BMI right now don't have, and that's the zoom with pan and scan. So to do that, all you have to do is tap the joystick up, and that's gonna zoom in two times. If you do it again, that's gonna zoom in four times. Additionally, if you press the button or the joystick, you are gonna be able to pan and scan around the image. Now, I wish my current monitors have this, but unfortunately they do not. And that's really nice because you know, when I'm shooting movies or talking shots by myself, uh, it's just me. So it's nice for me to be able to, you know, it's easier for me to focus myself when I can zoom in and pan and scan, you know? So that's a really, really nice feature that this monitor has. Go ahead and exit out by just tapping the down joystick once. All right, so what we're gonna take a look at now are your uh, options, the monitor's options. That was just the tools that we went over. Now what we're gonna look over are the options this monitor has. So if we go to uh, left joystick, hold it for three seconds, you are gonna be able to access the menu system or the monitor settings. So in the input, you can change this from HDMI or SDI. I'm gonna leave it at HDMI because that's what we have in the input right now. You can change the volume of the headphones and I forgot to tell you guys, there is a headphone jack on the right side right here so you can plug a headphone in. In the backlight, you're gonna see that this backlight is set to zero, and I'm gonna show you why I have it set to zero. Uh, this monitor is 3000 nits, and my goodness, it is bright. Uh, additionally, you can rotate the screen and you can rotate the image. Let's say if you have an upside down gimbal setup or something like that, or a helicopter, you can flip your image on the monitor itself. Now, one of the cool things that I really like in a camera uh, is the anamorphic capabilities. You guys already know this. I love anamorphics, right? So this monitor has proper de-squeeze options for one times, one, three, three, one, five, one, six, two times, and then two times mag or magnified. So this monitor can de-squeeze your anamorphic footage for you, which is super sweet. Also, if you are using a DSLR and need a DSLR scale, you do have these options here for, man, some old school camera right there, 5D Mark II and Canon 7D. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and then go back. Going down to the status display, let's go ahead and turn it on. If you do the battery only, you are gonna see that the battery is gonna show up in volts, which I prefer more than percentages. I honestly believe that battery indicators should be in volts because it's a little bit more accurate as far as trying to let you know how much batteries you have left. Uh, additionally, you can choose on and it's gonna show you your input right here, HDMI 1080, 24 frames per second or you can just have it at off. I'm just gonna leave it with battery only so I know how much battery I have left. 
Additionally, in the system settings, you can calibrate this monitor, but if you are a new user and you don't really know what you're doing, leave this option alone. All right, you can also change the language, which I am not gonna do that because I don't wanna jack that up. And the monitor info is gonna show you the serial number and the version of your monitor. As far as I know, this monitor does not have a firmware update just yet, but I could be wrong. And similarly, like I said, firmware update is right here. This is where you update the firmware using a SD card on the side of the monitor. And you can see that the battery just changed from 7.4 to 7.3 volts, which is nice. All right, so if you scroll down from firmware update, you are gonna end up in the load LUT file. This is how you load your LUTs using an SD card on the side of the monitor right here. And lastly, you can factory reset the monitor with one button. So you can do that if you jack something up. So let's go ahead and exit out. And now what I'm gonna show you is the uh, shortcut for uh, brightness so if you press down on the monitor itself you're gonna see the backlight option you can see that it's at zero and that's because I am recording here I have my camera stopped down at F I think it's 5.0 and it's still really bright so I had to turn the backlight down a lot and I also have an over light here because it was just it was really hard to get something it was really hard for my camera to, to get the detail on the monitor because it's really freaking bright so and I'm gonna show you right now how bright this monitor is indoors so let's go ahead and turn this baby up sorry all right turn it up and you're gonna see at 10 it's gone <laughs> so that is why we had it set at zero because I want to be able to capture uh, using my camera here like I'm doing now next we will talk about latency now latency is the difference between your subject and what the monitor is showing latency is extremely important if you do a lot of live focus pulling there is some latency in the G7 but I don't focus pull a lot so it doesn't bother me too much and lastly, probably the best reason this monitor catches my eye is its brightness. Now, after owning the 2000 nits port keys BM5 for over a year now, I honestly can't go back to anything less than 2000 nits. My eyes have gotten used to 2000 nits. Now, the OC G7 has a whopping 3000 nits. Now, living in the desert where the sun shines 99% of the day, this is a huge help. I honestly don't even think you will need the sun hood it comes with because 3000 nits is good enough for me outside when shooting outdoors. Having bright monitors help me focus subjects better, gauge exposure better, and frame shots better. I don't have to take a black t-shirt outside and cover my head and the camera to see. I don't have to buy a sun hood that covers the screen. The OCG7 will set you back $700, but OC also has an HDMI only version called the OCT7, which costs 400 bucks. All right, so with that being said, I am gonna be testing this monitor out for OC. And um, like I said, they did send this monitor for me to review, but uh, they were pretty cool with me uh, telling them like, look, I'm gonna take a look at the monitor, but I am gonna be 100% honest because honestly, this is the first uh, sponsored uh, item I have ever reviewed in the channel. And because I don't like uh, companies pretty much telling me what to say when it comes to reviewing items so oc was really cool when i told him look i'm gonna review your i'm gonna review your monitor but it's gonna be my thoughts and my findings if you guys have any questions let me know and like always i will see you guys later